The Lord God of Israel said, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. His reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. May the Lord's blessing rest on his word as we've read it in this way today. Well, last week, if you remember, we talked about hope. And then today, we are going to actually talk about more hope. Uh, not this more hope, but uh, <clears throat> this more hope. Um, being the first Sunday of Advent is a good time to examine the different facets and characters of, of the Advent season. Uh, quite often, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to uh, approach, especially event Sundays, uh, because... They're special event Sundays, you know, and uh, and after 30 or 40 years of special event Sundays, um, if you don't want to repeat one, you've got to keep doing new ones. Uh, But, you know, as I was preparing for this, the Lord spoke very clearly about some things, and and I want to share that with you. So if you have your Bibles, let's look to the the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Over the next few weeks, I want to look at topics like hope, uh, joy, love, and peace. Hope to do it in that order. So the first one, well, we started it last week with hope. But here in, uh, in Luke, chapter 2, it's a... Uh, it's a passage of Scripture we don't always or often associate with the Advent story. It begins in verse 21. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves, and two young pigeons. Let's pray. Our Father, today we're thankful, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to be able to be here. Uh, Father, every every Sunday, as we gather in, in the morning and the evening, Lord, it's, it's remarkable to me of how your presence is here and how your spirit stirs and and Father, it's remarkable to me the, the moving of, of yourself in our lives. And, and Father, it's important to us that we meet with you when we, when we gather. For Father, we, we don't do this because we're religious. We don't do this because it's become a part of life. We don't do this because, well, this is just what we do. But Father, we do this because we know that you are here And we want to meet with you in a very distinct and and in a a corporate kind of way that moves into an individual kind of way. So, Father, we're thankful. Lord, I'm thankful that, Father, that you're here today again. Lord, you have never failed us in this. And, Father, this morning, I'm asking, Lord, in Jesus' name, that, 
you would, you would guide us as we look into your word. Uh, Father, I am thankful for the way that, that uh, your spirit has led us through the music and the singing to the, to the place of your throne. And Father, now as we look into your word, I pray, Lord, that its truth would be applied to our life situations. Uh, Father, you know the things that we have experienced this week. You know the, uh, <clears throat> the journeys that we have all been on. Father, you know the struggles and you know the blessings. Father, you know the difficult times and conversations and the, and the wonderful times and conversations and, and joy that's been a part of our lives. And, and Father, today, Lord, we come with, with all this, this big package of life strapped to our backs. And Father, we, we find ourselves here and we look expectantly to you in hope. <clears throat> Father, I know that you have prepared something special for each one, something real and dynamic in that, Father, it operates in our lives day to day. And Father, I pray, Lord, again today that, Lord, that you would guide and guard the words of this mouth. I ask, Father, that no word would come across these lips except that be according to thy will. For, Father, we do want to know what you have to say, what you, Father, have to say. Father, I acknowledge your sovereignty. I acknowledge that you are the creator one, the God of all things. And, Father, I submit myself to your authority, as do we all. Guide us, Lord, for we seek to see you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so last week we talked about hope. Talked about hope, if you remember, just by way of background, from the perspective of Romans chapter 5, which you wouldn't think probably would be an Advent kind of a conversation. But there, there is a, a, there's a lot of information there about hope. Once we were sinned, but through Jesus Christ, we were justified by faith, you know, which once we were hopeless, now we have hope. Um, you know, through Jesus Christ. And, and, and all of that actually was, that's the core of the Advent message, you know, that, that Jesus coming brings hope, brings joy, brings peace, love. <clears throat> so here <clears throat> in the passage that we have, you, you notice that there was a certain time, a certain event had to happen <clears throat> according to the law. And then uh, they were naming the child Jesus as Brad had mentioned, as Pastor Brad had mentioned earlier on, and it means God uh, saves us. You know, that's why the angel said, you will call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, the Savior. <clears throat> <clears throat> Did you know what Jesus' last name was? Anybody know? Well, Christ, actually, Jesus the Christ means Jesus the anointed one. So you put those two together. It is Jesus, the Savior, who is the anointed the anointed Savior, which is a, it's kind of a cool name, but <clears throat> here it says that at this time, he was named Jesus. And he was named Jesus because the angel had given him this name even before all of this began, when he uh, met with Mary um, earlier on, and, and you can read about that in, in another part of the Bible. But then it goes on, it says, and when the time of purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of, two, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. So, so Joseph and Mary, <clears throat> Jesus, at this, at this very specific time, at this very specific event, at this very specific place, decided that today was the day. <clears throat> now there was a time frame involved and, and, and at this day that they showed up, this was the right day to be there. And then what? And then what? Now, now we could talk about the law and the time frame and all the kind of stuff that happens, <clears throat> but this passage of scripture goes on and it says, it, it deals with two very, very cool kind of things. 
Because at the next verse, after the last one that we read, after verse 24 comes verse 25. And it says that when they were there, it says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. So as they, as they came to the, to the temple this particular day, fulfilling the law, doing the things that they were supposed to be doing, they, as, they, as they showed up and, and there they, were, they had Jesus circumcised and, and a very official naming, you know, they're going to call him Jesus, which means God is our Savior, and all this is done. And then, and then, then it goes on and says, now there was another guy there by chance, by purpose, by plan, but whatever was happening, it was location specific. Notice that first. Two other people showed up on this particular day and God said to each of them, he said, today, you know what? Maybe you're not feeling so good. You know, today, you know what? Maybe, maybe you're thinking of taking a vacation. Today, maybe, you know what? You don't know why you're here, but you're here for a purpose. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Hey, that's kind of an interesting thing. And he was righteous and he was devout. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And so moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. You know, it kind of gives a little bit of background around this guy, Simeon. He was, he was upright, he was righteous, he was prophetic, he, was, he spent time in the, in the realm of the Spirit with God, the Holy Spirit moved on him, the Holy Spirit spoke through him, and so on this particular day, it says he was moved, verse 27, he was moved by the Spirit, and he went into the temple, and into the temple courts. And I, I, I kind of I wonder, you know, <clears throat> what, what, what was he thinking? a very spiritual guy, a very righteous individual. And, and so as he, as, he, as he was having his devotions on this particular morning, all of a sudden there was a stirring in his heart that, that kind of said, you know, uh, Simeon, today is a day that you need to get yourself into the temple. Now, I, I want you, when you get to the temple, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where to stop and just where to stand, just kind of where to wait. And I wonder if Simeon thought to himself, well, Lord, what, what's going on today? Do I, need to, do I need to pack a lunch? You know, is it going to be a long time? Do I, you know, do I need to take some money and, and maybe buy a hot dog on the street? You know, or do they eat hot dogs, Jewish people? Is that kosher? <clears throat> you know, Lord, what, what kind of preparations should I make? You know, what, what, what's involved, Lord, with me showing up to the temple courts today? What does all that mean? Well, I didn't say that he had that conversation, but... <clears throat> if the Lord's ever spoken to you, sometimes you think that. Do I need to find a hotel someplace? Is this going to be a long trip? Do I need to book a ticket somewhere? You know, how, how, what kind of preparations do I need to make? Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. There's, there's that one moment, that one aha moment. When after you have heard the Holy Spirit speak to you about being in a certain place at a certain time, and maybe you don't know why, all he seems to say sometimes is, you show up here and just, you, you just be there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to be a part of your life in a way that you, that you wouldn't even ever imagine. And so Simeon did that. And then all of a sudden, here come down the aisle right here. Here comes uh, Mary and Joseph, and they're carrying a little baby. And all of a sudden, in Simeon's heart, something stirs. Something all of a sudden jumps up. And he says, this is why I'm here. This is the fulfillment of the promise of God a long time ago. Because it says to it, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, verse 26, that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's anointed. And here all of a sudden comes this, this little couple with this little baby. And, he say, and he's saying, this is the fulfillment of God's promise in my life.
You think saints ever get tired? Norma, you're nodding your head over there. Saint Norma. <laughs> but you know, it makes me wonder, right? Do saints ever get tired? Do you know the saints? You know, I think of uh, of Simeon here. He has all the characteristics of a saint: righteous, devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit was on him. You know, there were, there were all these characteristics that you kind of think, you know, I would, I would say he would, if, if, you know, if you needed someone to pray he'd, for you, he'd be a great guy to have pray for you, St. Simeon. <clears throat> but what if he was tired this one particular morning? He said, you know what? I just don't feel like going to church today. I just don't feel like it. Yeah, Lord, I, I know you're saying I should, and I know you're saying, you know, that's, you know, that, but Lord, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, you know, I had, a, I had a tough week. I had a tough week. You know, and, and I know that I got to sit there and listen to that crazy preacher ramble on for, sometimes he talks for an hour. But Lord, I'm tired today. What if the, the whole, the, the, the main promise of his life may have been missed? <clears throat> it's, it's a remarkable thing. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. <clears throat> Hope. Yeah, I was reading the, uh, the prayer that Simeon said. Did, did you notice what it said? You, know, did you, read, you read it, right? <clears throat> did you think about what it said? Pretend for a minute that you're either Joseph or Mary. Pretend. And, uh, and you're bringing your firstborn male child. Brady, that'd be you. I'm not going to ask you to come up, Brady, but I'm sure thinking towards it. <laughs> I'm kidding you. I wouldn't do that much. <clears throat> but imagine you're Joseph or Mary. You've just brought your child for dedication today. And a, a very powerful figure of faith has just shown up into church and, and he says something, he says, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Maybe, maybe a general superintendent just shows up and, <clears throat> and, he, and he comes up to the front and you're, we're about to dedicate your child and, and, and the general superintendent says, says, pastor, could I say something? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, now I can depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, <clears throat> a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory of your people Israel. And all the time he's saying this, he's looking at, at, your, at your firstborn child here, your firstborn son, and he's saying, what a, what a, what a powerful blessing this person is going to be in, in the world in these days. <clears throat> and all it says in verse 33, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Would, would you have hope? That's my question. Would you have hope if that would have happened to you? I, you know what I would think? I would think, oh, my soul. You know, I, I don't, you know that, that someone with this kind of spiritual energy and power that, that they'd show up and they would say that, I'd say, some, you know, this child is, this, this is more than I could ever think or expect. Or, you know, or did Mary's mind go back to the angel and saying, you know, that, that you're going to call him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. And maybe Joseph's mind went back to, to the dream that he had. He said, don't be afraid to, to take Mary as your, your wife because that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. You know, you can read about that in Matthew chapter 1 there. You know, and they're thinking about all this stuff and, and now it's being, being confirmed by this guy Simeon. And, and everybody knows Simeon. Simeon. 
Verse 34 says, and then he blessed them. <clears throat> he blessed them. What does that mean? What does that mean if somebody prays a prayer of blessing on your life? Well, you know, I, I, pr I pray for people sometimes and I ask God to bless them, right? I, I say, Lord, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm asking in Jesus' name that your blessing rest on these folks. So, so what did he say? Get ready. You're not going to like it. <clears throat> this is what he said, verse 34. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce, will pierce your own soul too. How would you like me to pray that over you? What do you think? Anybody want to step up to that today? <clears throat> Brad and Mandy, I'll, I'm going to pray that a sword will pierce your heart today. <clears throat> Just stay away. That's what you're saying. You know, or, or even here, you know, he says, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. You know, that, to me, that sounds like revolution, to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. And he, and he, and he goes on, he says, uh, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. <clears throat> how, how would you like, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, if, I, if one day, you know, the Holy Spirit said, Mark, I want you to pray a blessing on everybody and, the, and all the thoughts of everyone's hearts are going to be revealed today. I think. Anything you want to change right away this morning before we continue? <laughs> you know, there's, there's certain things in our hearts that we don't really want anyone else to know. Things we've done. Things we've said. Things we've thought. Things we've battled against. This, this is his blessing here. This is, a, this, is a difficult, this is a difficult blessing. Well, you know, hold, hold on to that thought for a minute because we're going to come back to Simeon, but... But it says, it says there was also this other person there. So, so Mary and Joseph showed up to church this one particular morning and, and they were dedicating Jesus and he was being circumcised. They were giving them the name. It was a regular rites, you know, as, a, as in a ritual of what God said to do in the temple. And, uh, and this guy, Simeon, he, he kind of interrupted the whole thing and he began to do, you know, the blessing and he began to, to pray and he began to pray over the child and all of this. And then it goes on and says, and there was also this other person and it was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to whom, to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. When Mo, Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. <clears throat> so Anna, who also was a prophetess. Now Anna, Anna's, you know, the, the stuff that, they, that they're saying here about Anna, you, you see that, eh? It says she was very old. Now that's, now that's a very, uh, that's a good, good way to start, you know, Karen? Here, here's Karen over here, and, and she is very, no, she's not, because, uh, you know. But, but how, would, how would you like that to be your introduction? You know, and, and uh, you know, and uh, here's my wife, and she is very good looking. You know, or, you know or, but, you know, we, we want to have something favorable. We don't want to have someone to say, come up and be introduced. Well, you know, their claim to fame is that they're very old. You know, this is so-and-so, this is and, -so, and, well, she's just very old. You know, that... that, that but then it goes on and it talks a little bit about her life. She was married for seven years. 
So the assumption might be that she was probably married before she was, before she was in her 70s. So probably she was married as a teenager, as was the custom. So let's, let's just pick a number. Let's say she was married when she was, I don't know, let's, let's pick a number. What's a number? Let's say she's married when she was 20, just because that's a number. <clears throat> and so then she was married for seven years. And uh, so she's 27. And then her husband died at 27 or 25, depending on when she was married, somewhere in there. And then she was a widow for all those years, never remarried. You remember what Jesus said that part of the thing was, was that a brother would take the, the, uh, the, the wife of a deceased brother's, you know, so that she would have a place and all that kind of stuff. And, and the laws that were at that time that a woman couldn't inherit estates, you know, couldn't inherit money, you know, there was no, no way for her to live without a spouse. And yet here she was 84 years old now and she spent all of her time, what does it say? And she never left the temple, um, verse 37, last part of it. She never left the temple, but worshiped day and night, fasting and praying. Coming up to them, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. See, these two people were in the temple. One was looking forward to the consolation of Israel. You know what the cons consolation means? You know, to console. It means to uh, give hope in a time of trauma. It means to lift up. It means to build up. It means to, 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 to be a consolation, you know? Well, someone, say, someone might say, well, you get the consolation prize. You know, you didn't win the game, but you get the consolation prize. Well, to console you know, is to encourage, it's to, it's, it's to build up. And, and so, um, so uh, Simeon was there waiting for the consolation of Israel. Anna was there, and she was looking to, forward to the redemption of Israel. The redemption of Israel, you know, the, the very simple definition of that is, is that, that it would be redeemed. You know, it, it would be, it's like a pop bottle alongside of the road that once was full, and now someone drank all the pop, and then they threw the pop bottle away, and now it's all full of dirt, and it's all full of muddy water, and it's not fulfilling its purpose anymore, because its purpose, it was created to be full of pop, and so to redeem it, you pick it up, you wash it off, you clean it out, and you fill it back up, you cap it, and you put it on the shelf, and there you say, now that has value again. It, 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 right now, it's at its peak value when it's up on, the, up on the shelf, full of what it's supposed to be full of. That's redemption. And she was looking for the redemption of Israel. <clears throat> so her understanding of Israel in that moment is that it was laying in the dirt, not fulfilling its purpose. Uh, it, it was wasted. Whatever good and value it had was, had already been poured out. And she was waiting for the Messiah to come, to pick it up, the nation, to wipe it off, to clean it off, to fill it up, and put it back into its rightful place in the course of history. That's what she was waiting for. And she saw that in Jesus. <clears throat> these two people, even in the course of trauma and tragedy in all of their lives, for however long it took, maintained the expectancy of hope. How, how do they do that? How, how, do, how do they do that? Simeon, righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Somewhere in his life, he received this promise. As he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, as he was waiting for the Messiah to come, he received this promise, and, it, and the promise was simply this. Simeon, I'm going to give you a promise. I'm going to keep you alive until the Messiah is here. Months passed. Years passed. Decades passed. 25 years passed. 
30 years passed, and, and still there was the expectancy of hope even in the, in, the, in the midst of all the time that was passing and passing and passing, <clears throat> and still he maintained the integrity of that promise that was given to him. Why does God do that? Did that for Abraham, remember that? 25 years. Finally, poor old Abraham was 100 years old. I'm looking around, I, I thought someone here was almost 100. I'm not picking on anybody in particular. But I, I, I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not looking at you. Don't you now you're growling over there. <clears throat> I'm looking at that Marty down there. <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. You know. But you know, I, I had a birthday. Okay, I'll, I'll say that. I turned 58, actually. Where's Jaden? He thought I was 35. <clears throat> now, I took that as a compliment because you're only 35, aren't you, Brad? 34. Oh, my soul. You look like 35. <clears throat> so if Jaden thought that I looked like the same as his dad, well, how am I going to take that? Or maybe... Yeah, I thought the other. Well, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I'd love to have grandkids. Ruth, but we ain't having no more. No, no, no more kids. I, uh, I, I love my kids. But boy, I remember diapers. I can talk color. I can talk, I can talk crying all night. I can talk colic. Remember that? Colic, Henry? Remember that? I bet you were up every night with that, weren't you? You know, I, I don't know. Abraham and the promise, and he was a hundred years old. I, I, knew, I knew somebody on Prince Edward Island that's, that's, that's our age. And uh, remember, and she had a, she got pregnant. It was a mis you know, it wasn't a mistake. No child is a mistake. She didn't expect it. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, her first words were, you know, I didn't expect this. And the look of shock on her face was, <laughs> was quite evident that this was not expected. You know, and I'm thinking, oh my soul. But why does God wait so long? That's my question. And how does the expectancy of hope deal with the length of time? What about your kids? The promise you gave, or God gave you, that your kids would be saved. One year passes into two. Lord, are you still there? Lord, are, are, what, what about my kids? Two years pass into 10. Lord, are you still there? There is this expectancy of hope. That's what I see in Simeon here. In, in Anna is a, is a whole other thing. And it begins in the description that her life began well. but then filled with trauma. And I, and I wonder to myself about, about Anna, Lord, is, I don't understand this. You know, I, I thought that you had plans for me. I thought that the plans for me and my wife would be that we'd be sitting on a Caribbean beach someplace, you know, at 55. You know what I found out after this birthday? Well, you know it anyway. There's no freedom in 55 or 56, or 57, or 58. Why, I don't even think there's freedom in 88 anymore. You know what I'm saying? But Anna's life was, it had some difficult stuff there. But yet, even in the midst of all of this, she maintained that integrity of the promise of hope, waiting for the redemption of Israel. You see, you see, hope is linked to an understanding that God is sovereign. God has a plan. We don't always understand that plan, and, and sometimes it's really hard to accept that plan or even to live in that plan, but God has a plan.
and to maintain the integrity of our hope means that we submit ourselves to his authority and say, you know what, Lord, I don't understand this, but I'm going to walk with you through it. Matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah, as we were singing uh, earlier on, as Brad, Pastor Brad was leading us there, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, you know it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from <coughs> captivity. Bring you back from captivity. That means that the people he's talking to here in Jeremiah's day were in captivity. They were in a state of bondage, lostness. You know, and we, we look over here to uh, Simeon, and, and he was waiting for the consolation, which means that he saw there was a need to be consoled. We look over here at Anna and we see that her life was filled with trauma and, and difficulty and tragedy early on and, and yet she maintained this and, and, and her life, she was looking for the redemption of Israel. She was looking for the salvation of Israel. You see, there was a need there. And so as we move into this Advent season, the question that comes to my, to, to my mind, you know, as, we, as you go to the Santa Claus parade, you know, the other night, or, or maybe you go to the stores and, and all the bells are ringing and all the tinsel's flying and all the trees are tracking up and down the road and everybody's, you know, doing this and doing that and all the preparations. I'm wondering to myself a, a couple of things. What about you? Do you have hope? Do you need consolation? Do you need redemption? What, what about you? Are you lost in time, waiting for the promise of the Father to be fulfilled? They called him Jesus which means Savior, or he will save his people. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says something to the effect that faith is confidence in what we hope for. I stumbled into another verse in Romans chapter 15 says this, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope. So, I said all of that, say this. Maybe this morning, your hope is waning. Maybe, maybe this morning you're stumbling through the journey Maybe this morning you're feeling overwhelmed or life is out of control. You ever feel that? I feel that quite often. But you, you know what I have to do to sense control again? I have to stop. And I say, Lord, did you mean it or not? And you know what he says to me? I meant it. 
And I take a deep breath and I say, okay, let's keep on going. But sometimes you just have to stop and say, Lord, did you really mean that promise you gave me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 80 years ago? You stop and you say, Lord, did you mean that? And he says, yes, I meant it. Nothing will separate me from you. Not height, not depth, not principalities, not powers. Nothing will separate me from you. Just stop for a moment in this beginning Sunday of Advent. Take a deep breath and let his spirit flow over you. See, that's what it says. As you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, now that's an Advent promise. I, uh, maybe you don't know why you're here today. Maybe you think to yourself, well, I'm here because this is what we do every Sunday. Well, I'm going to suggest no. I'm going to suggest you're here because God wants to talk to you. And so, Brad, do we have a song to sing? We're going to, we're going to sing a song in closing. You know, this, 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 the sermon part of all of this is so that we could come to this one spot of our individual time with God. Just, just a few moments of quietness, a few moments of peace. And so as we, I'm going, to, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to sing this song. And as we sing the song, I want you just to take a few moments right where you are, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, and I want you just to, to, to ask God, what about me? What about me? Is it, is it okay? That, is that promise still in effect, Lord? What about me? Lord, the, the burden I'm carrying today is more than I can. What, what about this? And then I want you to listen to what he says. Would would you do that? Let's pray. Our Father, this morning, Lord, we are thankful for the opportunities that we have to be a part of your kingdom. Uh, Father, I'm, you know, even as I even as I begin, I, the, the, I'm mindful of, of so many things whirl around inside. And and as disciples were leaving Jesus a long time ago, and he looked to those twelve and he said, Will you leave me too? And they responded and said, where would we go? You have the words of life. And Father, this morning, Lord, we recognize your presence here. Father, I acknowledge your presence here. I acknowledge your leading in the service this morning. I acknowledge, Holy Spirit, your your, uh, guiding power and strength. Uh, Father, I acknowledge that you are the sovereign king of all that is. I acknowledge that you sent your son, Jesus, that we would have hope and peace and joy through salvation. Through the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Father, you know our hearts today. Lord, some of us are struggling. Some of us are carrying burdens that, Lord, we, we don't know. We, we, don't, we don't know how to handle this. And Father, I, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, of that passage from Jeremiah 29 and, and verse 11 that, that you have promised that you would give us hope and a future. And so, Father, as we sing this last song, and Lord, as we spend some quiet time with you, Lord, before we begin the busy season of Advent, Lord, as we spend some time with you, make our hearts right once again. Lord, help us to to sense that the ship is being righted. It's not listing anymore to one side or the other. Lord, that 
Our burdens are becoming lighter because you're carrying more of the load. But Lord, I pray that you would bless these people with hope through the overflowing power of your Holy Spirit. Father, I commit them, Lord, into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.